Dangerous storms are on the horizon in China. It was meant to be the year of Xi, with China telling the world it was ready for a fight. But problems at home are getting in the way of the president's grand plan. Zero Covid, which is such a bonkers policy, has exposed one problem after another. The virus isn't going away, the economy is faltering, and Xi's people are angry. So how will the world's most powerful man respond? President Xi has been flexing on the international stage, publicly declaring China's preparation for battle as he was sworn in for an historic third term at the Communist Party's recent Congress, and setting the stage to become president for life. If that wasn't enough, Xi has placed six faithful loyalists into China's most powerful political body. And then there was the awkward removal of China's former leader Hu Jintao during the party congress. And at an event that is usually planned to the smallest detail, it clearly took many by surprise. And it's still unclear why it happened. I think this is probably going to remain as one of those mysteries that we're never able to have a precise answer. But the moment was symbolic. Hu Jintao led the country before Xi and is credited with opening China up to the world. With Hu Jintao literally removed from the scene and China's other great leader, Zhang Zemin, passing away last week, China has moved into a whole new era. Here's a government under Xi Jinping, who is you know, an autocratic ruler, the likes of which China hasn't seen since Mao Zedong's death in 1976. Xi has made it clear that he wants China to be the global superpower. And many say he sees uniting Taiwan, closely allied with the United States, to the Chinese mainland as a way to prove it. China considers the neighboring island as a renegade province. But Taiwan has its own constitution and elects leaders democratically. And the vast majority of Taiwan wants to keep it that way. Xi wants his leadership to be defined by this. Chinese power asserted not just in the South China Sea, but across the world. But at the moment, his gaze, and the world's too, is fixed on these protests at home, as his leadership is challenged in a way like never before. Freedom! China's severe zero COVID policy, that includes daily testing, mass quarantine camps, and strict lockdowns imposed for a single COVID case, has taken a huge toll on tens of millions of its people for nearly three years. And it's these measures that many have blamed for the death of 10 people in an apartment block fire. They say that fire trucks were unable to tackle the blaze because COVID restrictions meant streets near the building were blocked off. The tragedy helped kickstart waves of protests across the country. Not only are they protesting against zero COVID, they're also protesting for the first time, as far as we know, against the government itself. In ordinary times, openly criticizing the government in public would mean arrest or worse. But now people are challenging Xi's government on the streets. He is by his nature apparently a control freak. The political system around him allows him to be a control freak. And COVID comes along as the perfect opportunity to be a control freak over his entire population. There's just one problem and that's human nature. After fierce protest and pressure, China has now signaled a shift in its COVID stance as it moves to ease some virus restrictions despite high daily case numbers. Zero COVID was meant to be one of Xi's signature achievements. Proof that China could organize where the West couldn't. But incessant lockdowns have failed to stop the Omicron variant with record levels of COVID in November and have hurt China's once unstoppable economy which hit its slowest growth rate in decades. The social contract of modern China is, under Xi Jinping, we leave the politics to you, hmm. you leave the economy to us. And suddenly that has broken down. So with people facing economic hardship, people have taken to the streets, defying Xi in a way he's never seen before. The whole emphasis of, of Xi Jinping's rule has been that China will overtake America in terms of it, its economic numbers. A Chinese century, except zero COVID, which is such a bonkers policy, has you know, exposed one problem after another. And even though China is now easing restrictions at home, she still has big problems on the international stage. After years of being the factory of the world, providing us with cheap goods and services, China's relationship with the US has been severely weakened in recent years, starting with Donald Trump. China's been ripping this country off for 25 years, for longer than that. The former president placed sanctions on Chinese trade in 2020 for Beijing's human rights abuses against Uyghur Muslims and its crackdown on pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. Joe Biden has continued where Donald Trump left off, calling on manufacturing jobs to move away from China and back to the United States. And Washington has repeatedly pledged its support to Taiwan. Would US forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. The two leaders did meet recently at the G20 summit to try and ease tensions. There need not be a new Cold War. 
But no major breakthrough was made, and recently the United States and India held joint training drills on China's border. Another sign of strained relations. We're going to see a far more fractious relationship between China and much of led Western liberal democracies. And so with Xi facing his first serious test at home and showing no signs of reducing his ambitions on the global stage, it raises an obvious question. Do you think Xi Jinping could use foreign distractions to try and draw attention away from what's going on with zero COVID, particularly with Taiwan? That is an incredibly risky military thing to do. Xi Jinping should know that, having looked at how badly Ukraine has gone for Russia. If he's got any sense at all, he's looking at Taiwan thinking, no, this is not the distraction I'm looking for. And so instead, she might think it better to play the long game. I think the best option for Beijing would be bidding his time, increasing his economic capacity and the military capability up to a certain point that the United States was no longer able to contend China's rise and therefore Taiwan would automatically come back to China one way or another. The imminent threat might not be war, but Xi has made himself the most powerful Chinese leader since Mao Zedong. No one in his inner circle will challenge him. Meaning nothing is certain about how Xi responds to these tests. Will he double down like he always does? Or does the easing of COVID restrictions reveal a leader showing a glimmer of conciliation? Man,